ready. Okay, hi everybody. And welcome to our artist talk today. Uh, my name is Yuri Arais. I am the gallery director at The Culch. And today we have a special artist talk with Ginger Sedlarova and Seema Shaw. Um, they have an exhibition um, uh, on the online Culch Gallery right now, uh, Collage Works by Ginger and Seema. Um, and so we are here today to discuss these two artists work, what they do and so forth. And I just want to back up everything I said and just acknowledge that the Kulch, um, the theaters, the York Theater, the Kulch Theater, um, we all work and live on the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh nations. And it's a privilege for us to be here to do the work that we do. Uh, and I apologize for not starting that way. Um, if you have not seen the exhibition that is on the Culture's website, you can see it at theculch.com backslash gallery. And that is exactly where you found the link for this Zoom talk. And you can see both artists have a separate pile of work. You click on their image, it takes you into the show. You can read about each piece as well as an artist statement from each of the artists. Um, so, because we're not in a physical space, there's really not much housekeeping. Um, what we are going to do is, which you may have heard just before we started recording, is that everybody is on mute to start with. We'll go through the Q&A uh, kind of discussion part of it. If anybody has any questions while we're doing it, you're welcome to put them in the chat, or you can wait until we are done, um, where we're reserving time for people to ask questions of the artists. Um, and if you have any questions otherwise related to this, do the same thing, unmute or put something in the chat. So welcome again. Hello, Seema and Ginger. Um, I'm gonna start with you, Ginger, just cause it's alphabetical. Um, and I'm just gonna say, can you just introduce yourself to everybody and just give a little brief description of yourself and your work? Uh, hi, uh, thank you for moderating this chat, Yuri. And uh, yeah, my name is Ginger Sedlarova, which you've already heard four times, I think, so. <laughs> And I'm a collage artist. Um, I work out of Burnaby, a few meters from Vancouver. And, uh, oh, sorry. Um, and I am really nervous at the beginning of artist talks. So bear with me while I warm up. And um, I'm really happy to be showing at the culture again and uh, being paired with such an amazing, talented, fabulous other collage artist. And my work tends towards the surreal, the bizarre, um, and that's the way I like it. It reflects what's in my head. I'm surreal and I'm bizarre. Awesome. Seema, can you offer us the same? I can, I can try. Yes, I'm Seema <laughs> and I am a self-taught artist and my background is not in art, it's actually in healthcare. And it's been several years that I've been really focused on creative work, but for about the past seven collage has really been where, where my passion has kind of led me just inadvertently. That's been the kind of work that I've ended up doing. So at this point I consider myself a collage artist and yeah, thank you Yuri for moderating and for including my work in the show. And it's been great being paired with Ginger. We had never met before. And it's been like so wonderful to be paired with her. I love her work and it's been, yeah, it's been exciting to be part of a, another collab show, so yes. One of the reasons that we paired you both together is because your work is so completely different, even though you work relatively in the same medium. Um, and that's what we found the great pairing there. I mean, being able to show such extremes for me, such extremes and creativity uh, in working in collage was, was really, really interesting. Um, so that's how you both ended up showing together, um, which is great. Yes. Can I just add that Ginger and I have had a chance to have some conversations between being our work being accepted into the show and today, and we both had conversations about it and that's sort of what we've come to. It's been really interesting to talk about the, the differences between our work and how it's, we both do collage and it looks so different, but also the places where there's overlap between. Mm -hmm. And how it kind of comes from the same source inside. Yeah, yeah. Just in two different directions. We go from 
from that inner source? Well, the work is very narrative. Both of you have very narrative work. Um, it's not just based on aesthetics. And that's another thing that brings you both together really well is that idea of storytelling within the work. Um, but before I get to that, general question since we're talking about collage and that's really what the show is about. Can, uh, I'll just start with you Seema and then Ginger. Can you just talk about how you ended up working in collage, why this medium, what draws you to it and why it works for you so well? Or if you think it does work for you well too. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think it's working. I'm gonna change it to something else. Um, no, I, I think I have, thought about it over time. And part of it is, I think beyond explaining, it's just, I think we all have things that we we enjoy doing and we, whether it's art or other things and we can't really explain why. So I have just always, initially when I was starting to do more visual work, I wasn't sitting down thinking, I'm gonna do collage. I was just gonna create whatever I felt like creating in the moment. And for whatever reason, collage kept coming into the picture literally. And so I, you know, I, I have written this in a few different places, but really it's the piecing together of, of a story mm -hmm. and it's not knowing going into it what that's going to look like. And it, there's something that I find really satisfying about that and challenging. And it also is something that is exploratory. So while I'm doing it, I kind of figure out what is the meaning of what I'm trying to say. Mm. And it, it kind of surfaces as I'm working. So I, I enjoy that part of it. And yeah, I think there was a transition from, from I used to write more into doing collage. And so I, I it was just a, a piecing together of words and images that I really enjoyed doing. And how does the, I mean, in your work, you, you, you're, you're more, you're, you've got a lot of mixed media going on that, you know, you bring in paint and ink and other things. I kind of view that as this, it's just a, another way of giving information, right? Um, that's the way it seems to me. How does that work for you being able to work? Collage is relatively, it can be really rigid um, unless you really get to that place where you can make all of that flow. And with the addition of another medium, it kind of makes that easier, kind of accentuates that. Do you find that or is it just a completely different thing that you're bringing in as a medium to the work? I'm, I'm not, I'm not you know sure what? I know exactly what you're asking me, but I, I, yeah, can you, can you kind of elaborate a little bit more as to- I would say simply, can you talk about how paint works with collage for you? Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I think initially it was, and this is, a, it's connected, but it's a bit of a tangent, but when I started to, to actually do collage pretty consistently, I wasn't, I was, wasn't doing it using paint at all because I was working from bed and I was working on these little cards that I was just doing this kind of this own personal project for a year. And, and then when I started to work a little bit bigger, it was just something that happened naturally, but I think part of it is it, I don't know, it just happened naturally and it, it allows me to, you know, I, I cover over things with collage, but I also use paint and, it, you know, it adds part of the tone in terms of color and even how it's applied, as well as it partly covers up, you know, I tend to, when I create, I tend to create in a way that's actually quite busy that you can't tell from what it ends up as, but there's often like lots of things that maybe inform the final piece, but I'm not sure when I'm actually creating it, whether that's gonna be part of it or not. It's just part of what I'm feeling in the moment that might be part of the picture. And then some things get actually put into the collage, but then painted over. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of, I often take pictures as I go and kind of get a sense of what's working, what's not, what, what needs to go. And that's mm -hmm. sort of the paint helps yeah, and I just add something, I think, in terms of tone and, yeah, maybe meaning or feeling, hopefully. Great. Uh, Ginger, talk to us about collage. Um, actually, could I read you guys something that I came across when yeah. I woke up at 4 a.m. this morning? Thank you, cats, for fighting at the foot of the bed. 
Um, <clears throat> and I mean, this, this is something that I find is a common uh, misconception. So it came out of uh, one of my e email newsletters. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, for collage. So they wrote, collage art is a fun way to express yourself through color, images you love, and creativity. That I can't disagree with, right? That I can't. The next part I can, which is people love collage art because it is an easy way to express oneself through artistic methods. And I think Seema will laugh at that too. Collage is not easy. It may seem easy putting these images down on a board or on whatever you're working on, a book cover or whatever, but to get them to work together is a huge process. Sometimes they come together real easy. Yeah, it's, it's great, but sometimes it takes days or weeks to get the right images and the right paint on it and the right feel till you know you've finished your piece. Um, but I mean, after that, they actually said, and I think they got it right uh, when they finished, um, the possibilities of what can be done with this medium are endless, which means you can try new techniques every time, which is something I love about it, right? You, you don't have to only work like Seema does the same as me. Um, she, she's trying out new things with her collage. We're both trying to grow. So um, we're both working with paint. I've started working with fumage, which is uh, smoke, um, mixed media. And uh, I'm hoping I'm answering the original question I just realized, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, you're talking about how you make your, your work, your collage. Um, um, and I mean, a lot of my inspiration comes from, from music. I, I have a playlist that I listen to whenever I'm in the studio. It's about 17 hours long now. So I can spend a lot of time in the studio quite happily and never hear the same song twice, but I'll just, I'll hear a snippet of words off of a song and it'll get my brain going. And a few weeks later, I will have gathered a couple of images that I want to start with. And, and the next thing you know, uh, I'm pulling out my materials and eventually I have something that I think works. So that's- So, so music is really vital to you. Music is, I, I, my, my work tends to come from two sources. Either I'll be like rummaging through looking for something and go, wow, I forgot I had that. That's so cool. That's a main image. I've got to pull that out and work it as, as a panel sometime. Um, you know, I, I, an ideas board, it goes, it goes into the ideas board, wherever that may be. But music is the, the main, uh, my main creative source. Um, I, I worked in publishing in newspapering and magazines for 30 plus years, and I studied as a journalist. So words are really important to me. Mm -hmm. And they still, uh, they still spark ideas like crazy. I, it's something that I grew up with. And it still works. So yeah, I just love to hear a lyric and I, I get a visual image and I want to put that image down on a panel. How, how long has that been the case? How long has music influenced your work that way? Since the very beginning. Really? Okay. Since, since, since I first picked up a paintbrush probably um, and put it down, of course, and started collaging, but uh, um, since the beginning, music's really important to me. Um, I'm a Beatle maniac, right? I have been since I'm nine years old, so that's- I noticed the mug you're drinking out of with the straw. That's my hard day's night please, drink. Hard day's night, that's what it was. Um, I'm wearing I, a yellow submarine t-shirt, so. You uh, are serious. Um, I, I think music is an interesting thing to bring up. I, I, I'm always interested in, in how music plays a part in people's creativity because as creative people, we're always listening to music. And um, Seema, is that a part of your creative life, your studio life? Like, do you have music that you play when you're making or anything like that? No, that's a, it's an inter it's an interesting question, and it's been interesting for me over time. I used to listen to music, no, whether it, with anything, doing anything, all the time, and it was a huge part of my life and my world and my everyday. Yeah. Um, creating as well but for quite a while now that it's it's not that I never listen to music period but while I'm creating I I generally don't I I, I part of it I think is I, I find it I I, I kind of need to just be focused on what's inside and when there's and I need to generally work alone in my own space and 
yeah, I, I think maybe, yeah, I, I don't, I, it's just been something that's changed over time for me, but uh, really, and maybe before I was doing a different kind of creative work, but with, with collage, I've been, yeah, I'm, I mostly have to have a lot of quiet around me, mm -hmm. literally, as well as I need to kind of quiet my thoughts and just tap into a place where I'm not letting, not thinking too much about what I'm doing or thinking about what other people might respond to or mm -hmm. just kind of what, what is it, what is it I'm feeling? And I, I feel like to tap into it, it I, I think part of it is also to do with, like I live with chronic illness as well. And it, a lot of noise around, it kind of, it takes up the energy that I have. So it makes it harder for me to focus on what I'm doing, I think, what I'm doing when I'm listening to something and trying to do something at the same time. I can't do it in the way I used to, sorry. Ginger, you wanted to say something? Yeah, uh, it's it's funny because I work the exact opposite way. And I think that's why my collages tend to be so much busier is I always have a lot of noise and activity and I'm moving around. And so it's, it's funny, we have very different uh, processes. And that you know, way. in saying that, the first three collages of yours that are on the website all have stuff coming out of their mouths. Um, yeah. uh, it's it's just something I happen to notice in, in saying these things, you know. Um, I actually uh, speak to that. Would you mind? I do. Uh, this is why we're here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. Um, what what uh, I've kind of made some notes here that I'm I'm not going to read directly off of, but just uh, okay. just looking to the side. So yeah. So like I said, I'll come across an image that just sort of sparks an idea. Sometimes for a whole series, and I'll just work around it. And I'm just going to show. Um, one of my works, come here. I just have to find my mouse, I'm so sorry. Here we go. So um, with this one, for example, years ago, I saw a really cool image of, uh, and I hope everyone can see that, a really cool image of a screaming teenager at a Beatles concert. And it gave me this idea that someday I had to do an homage to uh, Edvard Munch is uh, the scream. And so this is where John Paul George Ringo came from eventually. Uh, it took a few years, but, uh, and then there's the other, um, the other, um, pardon me, uh, images in that series. I'll just show one more real quick. And uh, there we go. So yeah, uh, everyone's screaming in this series. And so, like I said, it's an homage. And uh, it all came out of just seeing this one image all those years ago. And mm. they are very busy, it's true. So, but that's just how I, I work, I guess. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it shows the direct influence, obviously. I mean, it really does. Um, and you brought up music as an influence. So mm -hmm. I'll bring to you, Seema, can you talk to the idea of um, inspiration, influence and stuff like that in your work? I can. I again. I, t I tend to. I, I think a lot of my work comes from trying to not just express something, but to kind of ex explore and explain even to myself some of what what is what I'm trying to understand, but even kind of beyond what I fully understand or know. So it's sometimes something. It, either, it, it doesn't always have to be dark and, and difficult, but it often is, but um, to, tr to try to make sense of that. But I, I, have, I have been thinking about it a bit and I was gonna share the screen as well. Um, Cause I've got two pieces in this show that usually my, my work is not necessarily inspired by something specific other than trying to kind of capture something mm -hmm. that's within me and ex like externalize it in a way. But I often start with looking through source material and, and again, trying to just not have too much of a, an idea in my head of what I'm looking for, just kind of see what speaks to me in the moment and don't really question why until I start working with it. Um, but two of my pieces in, in the show, and I'm just gonna share them from my iPad here. Look how patient we all are. 
<laughs> Sorry, I'm just slow. It's okay. I was like, we're all so attentive right now. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. So there's two two of my pieces that were, and this is probably, you know, it's not that often, but every once in a while I, I create pieces that are directly inspired by dreams that I have. And there has to be some something in a dream that makes me feel like I want to be expressing the, it creatively. So this was one piece, it's called A Tale of Two Cities. And then I've got another piece that uh, I think, oh, here, there. This one's called Mostly Below Ground. And the thing with both of these pieces is that, again, like there's, I, I feel like there these are, inspired by something very concrete, very specific, that again is, is a dream. But in some ways it's not that different than my other work. It's all kind of tapped into the subconscious and the dream is, is really a way, like trying to express a dream through the way dreams come across. It's like, it's, I'll, I'll stop sharing now. Um, I was gonna ask you in the sharing mode, Seema, can I, do you have all those images from the show available to you? Mm -hmm. You know the one piece you have on the book cover? Could you share that one? It's the last one in the show. And I'll there's I, two on a book cover. Okay, it's the one about the paint on the wall. The color oh, yeah, book. okay, yeah, yeah. It's uh, a good one to lead into some questions that I uh, okay, but uh, all I was gonna, uh, yeah, I, I can definitely do that. Um, there. And I think I interrupted a thought of yours if you want to finish that. Oh, I was just going to say that it's, in some ways it's not that different. Like when, I, when I'm trying to explain a piece of work, it, it's hard to explain. It's kind of similar to trying to explain a dream where, yeah, I, the dream came from me and I do have some level of understanding of it, but there's so many different ways to interpret a dream. And there's, you know, often things showing up through metaphor or, some sort of uh, imagery that is recurrent that might have more than one meaning behind it. So I, I feel like the work I create, it, even when it's something direct like a dream, that it's coming from a, a similar type of place within me that I don't fully understand, but I still, I understand or I understand certain, certain parts of it or, you know, and someone else might share their interpretation and I might learn something from that as well that might resonate with me about mm -hmm. my own about my own work but mm -hmm. so anyway so yeah this piece I, I can do you want me to keep it up or should I please um the, I wanted to use this as a reference for both of you because one thing that's very difficult in an artwork in general but collage uh because that's what we're talking about is using text and you both use text um I mean I, I don't want to lead the discussion on that in any way but can you talk about how it is working with text for you um, or address that in some way, talk about it somehow? Sure, uh, do you want me to stop sharing now? Sure. Okay. Um, Ginger, did you wanna go first or did you want? Uh, oh no, by all means, go ahead. I'm trying to think of my answer, please. Okay. Um, what, what was the question specific to test, text? So I'll lead you a little bit. Um, I mean, one of the things in your work, Seema, is your work is, you're talking about it from a lot of dreams and things like that, which tend to be less direct, a little bit more vague. Um, and in that piece we were just looking at, you know, there's so much stuff from, from the material you're using to how things are placed, what the images are and so forth that can have so much meaning or it could have none at all, but you've used, you've chosen to put four lines, I think it was four lines of text in there. I mean, you put a clear narrative there um, as opposed to let's say somebody letting the image just be on its own and work for itself. So I guess the question I would ask is how does that in that using that piece as an example, because it's something we just looked at, can you describe maybe that piece, how it would be different for you if it's not fair of me to say, but if the text wasn't there, 
because it's not a complete piece then for you, right? So I'm, I'm just trying to get your thoughts on really using text as a direct medium, as a direct informative informer, as opposed to not. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure I've got a great answer because the, the, that's the thing going into a piece. I don't, mm. I don't necessarily know if I'm going to use text. And I, so, you know, sometimes I, I play around with things for a while before, before knowing whether, like for some pieces, I feel like I'd rather let them just be on their own as an image without the text and other pieces I choose to, it's whether that's the right answer, I don't know. It's just what I have felt like in the moment. But that one, I kind of felt like it, it worked for me to add the text. And uh, again, I think a lot of, a lot of what I create, I, I, it's what feels right in the moment. It doesn't necessarily have a really logical explanation, mm -hmm. but for that piece, it's funny because I had the, the book cover. It was just, I was actually using parts of the inside of the book in the past and the book cover was lying there and the image the the top image that has the chair and the that's cut the bright color with the blue chair it happened to just fall on the book cover when i was moving things around and this was quite a few months ago and i really liked it there and i thought like i, I feel like i want to do something with it but it's i don't know what and then it was just more recently that i i came across another sheet of paper that had this text on it that i felt like I, it, it just started it, it just felt like the right thing to do with it. And so that, and sometimes it feels like the right thing to leave text out of it and let, I mean, I, I guess part of it is also that sometimes it, it, yeah, it leads, same with the title too, but I mean, it leads people in a certain direction, but I, I still feel like often it, it, if the text is done in a way that it, it still allows a lot of room for interpretation for people to put their own, their own interpretation on on the piece mm -hmm. but can i just tell you one funny thing about that piece yeah. i i had that that top part and then i just had recently done this project with somebody else on a, a different kind of surface than i usually work on that was uneven and i was trying to collage something onto it and it really wasn't working because it was very uneven and it it just wasn't didn't look good and i happened to have put a piece of paper behind it and the, the artist I was working with was like, oh, that seems to really work to kind of give it a smooth background. So I noticed with this book cover, that was the first time I worked with a book cover that the same thing, it was, there was something about the, the unevenness of it that was making it not look right. So I thought I put a piece of paper behind it and it just happened. And I was gonna be like, I don't know how I'm gonna get that uneven edge, like how I'm, I'm gonna have to figure out how to make that look so it's not obvious. And then I saw this person behind it and it just was like, it's one of those things where it's just in the moment, something, you know, um, whatever word you want to use serendipity. It works perfectly. That's what it is. You know, it, and it's just it, like, wait, I'm, I'm going to leave that. That's yeah. And it, and it was in black and white and it was just, it just happened. And I think, I think that's when things sometimes work, not work the best, but when I'm waiting for something to fix, to figure out something that's not working often when I stop trying and then just, something appears and it's like, oh, that would be perfect. Or you see two things right beside each other and it's like. The word I use for that Seema, and I think this, it, it really works for that piece, the way you've described it is it's organic collage. And yeah, it just, it, it sometimes things just fall into place naturally. Well, that's generally, sometimes you have to work to have them fall into place naturally. Sometimes they just do it. That's, that's yeah. the beauty of what we do. And it was so funny because it just happened to be the piece that I was going to just glue behind to give it some kind of smoothness. And yeah. So. Well, it, it, it's a successful piece. So it's, it's really came out well. Um, Ginger, I wanted you to uh, talk about text a bit, if you could. Okay. Um, I mean, I do use text, it's true. Um, but I find my words are, this is going to sound a little weird, but I, I, they're more visual stories again here comes the narrative the, the, the word story again um so uh yeah uh i always found for example like as a teenager even and up to this day i i always disliked watching music videos mm -hmm. because i found the as i heard a song the pictures in my head generally were better than what what the they were doing 
on the TV screen. So I would I'd stay away from that because it could actually ruin songs for me, right? Uh, if, the, if it wasn't well done. Um, so for, um, if I can show an example of, again, of uh, how music and also words mostly, I was listening in my studio to uh, Leonard Cohen one day. I, I love Leonard Cohen. And uh, so, yeah, while I'm listening er, er, to him, all of a sudden, you know, uh, it's, it, his, his words are just so stunning. And I just wanted to see if I could somehow lay them down visually, you know, uh, try and do justice to such a brilliant uh, writer. But um, to me, Leonard Cohen isn't a color. Uh, his words aren't color, they're, they're, they're grays, they're shades of grays and blacks and whites and reds. So if I may show part of, uh, well, it's called uh, One of Us Can Cannot Be Wrong, another Leonard Cohen lyric. And uh, I'm just gonna show or share real quick how, what I'm talking about here. And I just hope I've done his lyrics justice, um, but just his words are so contrasting and they're so, they're bleak, but beautiful. So I kind of tried to put that down on these, uh, these panels. I'll just mm -hmm. show, um, actually, I think the, uh, the person who uh, bought this recently is actually here. So yeah, I like seeing this. Um, this is this one. I should actually give, give the names. My apologies. This is they sentenced me to 20 years of boredom. So um, this is actually to me when I look at this, I'm, I see the words. Mm -hmm. And but what I also like is other people see different things when they look at my work. They may not necessarily see the same story that I'm trying to tell. They're seeing their own story. Does that? Yeah. Kind of, that's so, all good, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, it's just, I'm trying to put down on panels words, but visually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And no, that so, makes perfect sense. It, okay, it does. Yes. Well, I mean, it does because this is what you're saying. I mean, it's like, this is how, this is why I'm curious about it myself because there are people who, who literally use, you know, I mean, text if you break it down is an image you know it's got shapes it's got all of these things and it's kind of that that I'm interested in because a lot of times people are afraid of of words because they have so much you know like in Seema's piece there's there's a group of words as opposed to one word you know like it's there's a lot of interesting things there and I just wanted to kind of hear where you both were and Seema's going to continue to feed into it. Yes can I if, if I <laughs> just I happen to have this this photo as well so hang on so just going back to the same dream images and just to say something really quickly about both of them they they both involve dreams that it, it there's a lot that I'm, that's not going to come across here but just that they both one similarity is that they both involve um being underground going from being like above ground to being underground and being mm -hmm. in a place where I, I don't recognize where I am. And uh, that's just a small part of the dream. But for the second, this piece that's on the screen right now, I made the choice to leave words out of it. And I, I've got a little cut up poem that I wrote at the same time that was like, like part of it, but separate from it. So I've just got that as well. So, but I, again, like that's where it's, sometimes I choose to leave it out. Sometimes I choose to put it in. So this was, this was just the, like a stream diverted by the passage of time. I suddenly found myself standing mostly below ground, but no marker pointed out the location. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so, so sometimes there's words that, that are part of it, but they don't actually appear or they get covered over or they're separate. Yeah. So yeah. I tend to use a lot of newsprint at, uh, at times, not in the uh, works that are in this show, but uh, I mean, I, I do love getting some words in there. It, Again, it, I think it just comes from my background or just sticking a, a big word. And you're right. Uh, sometimes it just gets covered up just as you work the piece. So it's still oh, important. Sorry. Uh, it's, it's okay. It's, Same it's funny, though, because I know it's there, right? It's so still, it still, still has in, importance to it. And it still informs what comes on top of it, like what the end piece is. But also, I think it's also a way, of, and I don't mean I consciously try, but I think it's a way to incorporate some of the type of writing I did before. I mean, some of the little bits of poetry that I wrote before were not that different. So it's just 
kind of, I think, uh, um, not even trying, but I think it's a organic kind of natural transition. Like it, it just having it be part of it is mm -hmm. kind of just comes naturally in some pieces and other pieces. Yeah, it just seems better without it, so. I was gonna ask uh, rather in the chat, there's a couple of questions. Okay. Um, and one of them from Christina says, uh, some of both of your works have central images. Do you come across the image and decide what to say or do you look for the image you need? Does one come first? You've kind of answered that, but is there anything additional you want to say, either of you? Huh. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I do think actually I, I, I answered that myself um, in that, you know, I'll be sorting through and I'll just, I'll find an image that is just really cool, pardon me, and it'll spark an idea. And off I go. And sometimes there'll be the next piece I work on, or sometimes I'll just let it simmer for a while. I, there's a lot of simmering going on. I can't, you know, going on at all times in my head. There's got to be a hundred series on the go that I'm working on inwardly before I actually put them, lay them down. But, uh, and sometimes you put it down and it takes about 400 extra images around it or pieces of text or whatever, uh, torn paper, paint, before it actually works. So Seema, would you agree with that? I would, but could you also just repeat the question again, Yuri? Please. The question, the crux of the question was, what comes first, the text or the image, really? Yeah, I, 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 it's interesting because I, I thought about this around what my process is, and I've just been thinking about it because the question has come up a few times recently. And it came up for the, like, I've been creating for quite a while, and before I first like it's been the first time I showed my work anywhere was a few years ago. And that was probably the first time that question came up. And I had created several pieces up to that point, but I'd never really thought about process. I was just creating. I didn't think about how I was creating. And so I, I feel like I, my question, my answer at that time was like, I don't really have a process. And so I, I feel like it's not that different, but I've tried to think about it more and I don't, I have a process in that I look through source material, magazines, books, and I and I go into it without any specific intent, like idea going in, in the beginning. So that's sort of my process. And that's your process. I, I, and, and part of it is that when I'm in it, like I have to tap into this place and I can't always get there. And even if I do, it doesn't mean it it works, but in terms of creating something, but if if I'm if I'm really in the process and it's flowing. I have a hard time keeping track of what I did in what order, like after the, I have to look at it, think about it after. And it's, it's not consistent. Like, I, I think sometimes the image comes first, sometimes the word comes, words come first, sometimes. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think it's there. I don't think there's a, a set pattern for me. Me neither. Me neither. It's something that you'll just all hear or I'll see yeah. or whatever it's, it comes. That's actually half the fun is you never know where that inspiration is going to come from. Uh, you could be out with friends and you see something across the street and you go, hang on, that's a really neat idea for a collage, that sort of composition or whatever, right? It's, it's everywhere. I'm going to ask another question of you both from chat. And it says, aside from being highly, both of your works being highly narrative, what other areas overlap in your work? The source. We both Being. kind of work inwardly or coming from, in, whereas I, I think, and I, I hope this doesn't sound offensive to Seema, but she tends to stay inward in making her work, whereas I tend to sort of take it and push it out and uh, sort of work more with the world around me, where she's working a little more from inside herself. Do you see it that way, Seema? I, I do. I, I I think, um, and, and I, I, Ginger and I have talked a little bit about it as well. And I, I mean, I admire her ability to kind of have work that's a commentary on the world around her. And I, there's a lot of things that I admire that I, that don't come natural to the work that I do. So I feel like to, I have to, what I create 
just has to feel like it's coming from me naturally and not forced. So that, yeah, that tends to be what gets expressed in my work. And I, I mean, I, my hope is, again, I don't have like a big plan going into it, but I, I hope when I'm creating something, at least, you know, not everything gets shared either, but I'm, I hope that when I'm creating work that because what you had mentioned earlier, Yuri, about it being, I can't remember what word you use, but sort of um, not direct, like ob oblique, you know, that things are maybe through metaphor or through uh, evoking something without necessarily, you know, not necessarily having a, a set story that's being told, but something that people can hopefully connect to on, on a level, even though it's coming from something personal that maybe it some uh, expressed in a way that if other people can relate to any aspect of it, that maybe they can connect with that. But yeah, it's definitely coming from more of a place within than without. without is that, than I would just make a general observation of both of your work in that I think Seema, your work is much more, uh, I mean, it's obviously internally based, but it's much more quiet. You know, it's about taking something and just being with it and, and listening to it. And Ginger, you are just in my face. I mean, that's what you do, right? Like you are here to say what you have to say. And, and they both work because that's what they are. It's just completely different experiences. And, and that's what I like about seeing two different people who work in similar mediums you know, together because it, it really allows you to think about things so completely opposite as a viewer. Um, and to try to take it in. Yes, Ginger. Well, I think my husband who's here with us wouldn't disagree when I say that uh, my work reflects my personality, bold, brash, and noisy. Mm. And typically artists, that's their work does, right? You know, I mean, that's, that's part of who, how our work comes because it comes from us. So that kind of makes sense. Um, and that's all good because it is what it is, right? Um, and one of the things uh, I'm just, because our time is limited and I wanna make sure that we have time to let people ask some questions if they'd like. But one of the things that you both wanted to talk about, you asked me was talking about a seminal experience in your life. Right. So um, if you can, either of you, both of you talk about an experience in your life that really influenced your art or your creativity. Seema, would you mind if I go first? I can make this okay. quick. Um, <laughs> Because that no, it, it's something that it still amazes me. Um, it it was my seminal experience with my art now is was is I should say because it's ongoing the pandemic, because before this I was I was painting I was sculpting I was illustrating I was everything and every single thing I did was different, which is death for an emerging artist, right? I had no consistency, and when we all got locked down, I to put it mildly, I, I freaked out. I, I just, I froze creatively. So I started making little uh, collage, collaging little postcards and mailing it off to friends and family. And they actually turned out pretty good. They've, they've, they've been in a couple of shows. They, they were my first works. They were my first series. And so it's kind of awful because, I mean, I've, I've lost friends. Many of us have lost people we love during this. And I don't want to say, yay, pandemic. This is not what I mean. But being locked down and just that panic attack, that anxiety I had helped me to focus on what I wanted to do with my art life. So, which is, may sound bizarre, but it, it's the one good thing that's come out of this for me. And, and it's still not over, I realize that, but that's, that, that was a major experience. It helped focus me finally on where I wanted to go with my, my life art-wise. Mm, it's interesting. Seema? Yeah, I, I, for this, I, it, there's like a really, I think, I, I've thought about it before in the past and my answer to that would be like illness and chronic illness and the onset of that. But when I thought about it in the past and I've been thinking about it more recently, but it's been like, well, that was a turning point, a very, gradual, not immediate, you know, um, and it just happened again, like organically with some journaling. And it was a turning point where I, I, I went from, you know, my background is in healthcare and it kind of shifted my focus. And 
over time, I, I was doing a lot of um, writing. So it shifted my, my focus to creative work. But more recently, like, again, it's not recently, but I, I was thinking more about like, because again, this show is about collage, about the transition from writing to doing more collage work. And it's, it's not exactly the same, but it, it's similar in terms of, I had mentioned before, these little, there are these little shipping tags that I, I was at a point where with chronic illness, I had, I had kind of regressed a bit. I had been doing a bit better. And then I had this period where I, I was in bed a lot more and I wasn't doing, I went through a period where I was also just doing more than I probably should have. And wasn't doing any, able to do any creative work for like 2013, I did barely no creative work. So 2014, I was like, it's not good for me when I'm not creating. And I, but I don't have it in me to do that much more. So I made this commitment. It was an idea I got from somewhere else, but to, to use one of these tiny little cards and commit to doing something on one of those every day. And I felt like I can do that. I can spend like a minute on it if I want, or I can spend a lot more. And a lot of it ended up being collage for whatever reason. And that was, I feel like that I, I could, I say that I started collage roughly seven years ago, because that was the year that none of it is work that it, that's big enough to do anything with really. But um, I, I created a lot of collage work that year. And then the next year is really when I thought, well, maybe I should work a little bit bigger. So I wanted to just address one thing that you said, Ginger, um, and I'm, I'm always the one to kind of bring these things up, but you were saying as an emerging artist, it's important for consistency and all that. I just want to stress the point, the most important thing is the work itself. You know, if, if an artist is, is working and, you know, they're making these series and there's one piece that lives, that's the piece you were meant to make. You know what I mean? It's like, I think the most important thing is to be making, um, you know, at some point, you know, series might be important or not, you know, everybody has their own opinion about it. But I, I just feel like it's important to always remind us as creators that, it, it, you know, rules are meant to be broken. That's why we're artists and you just need to create what is right for you. So just saying it. That's all, just saying it. Oh, I, I get it. The, the thing is, I, I, I could regret those years of doing the 40 different things and getting frustrated and all that, but I don't because it led me to where I am now. Exactly, exactly. Um, we are really close to our hour point. Um, and so if anybody wants to ask some questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask a question, or you can put it in the chat. Um, and while you're taking a moment, Desima, did you want to say something? Yeah, I think I, I'm going to remove the spotlight and so it will just be on gallery view now. Is that good? Okay. Yeah. And while we are thinking of a question, if you have one or if you don't, I just wanted to remind everybody that the show that Seema and uh, Ginger are in um, is online uh, at the Culch. Uh, the website is theculch.com backslash gallery. And that's how you can see the entire exhibition. Uh, the Culch is hoping to start doing in-person exhibitions again in January. At this time, we are still uh, doing everything virtually, which is extremely frustrating, but we are doing what we can to continue to bring art and culture to our lives every day. So um, we continue to do things like this um, to just try to to help us all feel better with the arts, because we need to. Um, and I, uh, yes, does anybody, I don't see anything in the chat. Did anybody want to ask a question? And I'm just quickly looking through and I'm not seeing anything show up in the chat and nobody is raising their voice. So I'm going to, assume as I slowly draw this out that we are going to come to a close. Um, I wanna thank Ginger and Seema for doing this show with us, uh, for taking this time to share your honest thoughts about what you're doing. Um, it's not easy to do that and we all really do appreciate you sharing. Um, as I said, the exhibition is on until the end of the month, September 30th. It is on the gallery website, theculch.com backslash gallery. 
Um, and that show is up until September 30th. And the next exhibition um, is a solo exhibition with Norman Fox, East Vancouver photographer. And that show is from October 1st through October 31st. And uh, Thomas is just sharing that he wants to let you both know that he, your, both of your work is wonderful and he thanks you both. Mm -hmm. um, and did I see a hand, Susan? I think it's just a thumbs up. <laughs> it was just a thumbs up, but I really wanted to thank both of them for sharing their process because that's the part that I find the most fascinating. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much, Susan. And this is haha, Thomas. Just want to say that was a really enriching talk. Thank you both. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed it. And thanks for participating in it with us. We have another uh, chat comment. Aw. And Daniel, there's a thank you. Sharing lots of love, which is really great. I will say if you need to follow up with any of the artists, you can contact me directly uh, by email and I can connect you to those artists. My personal email at the Colch is gallery at the .com. Anything I can share towards the artist and then they will get back to you directly if anything. Again, I wanna thank the artist. I wanna thank all of our participants. Uh, thank you for staying involved with the Colch. Thanks for trusting the Colch to bring you the art and culture that you need in our lives right now. And I hope you get a chance to go see that exhibition again online. All you have to do is just use your finger. It's all of it. Just, don't even have to move your bottom. You just gotta That's move. That's how we made the art, right, Seema? That's it's all Your about fingers. fingers. Fingers, fingers, fingers. So anyway, um, thank you everybody. Continue to be safe. And we look forward to you at the next culture event. And thank you again for every Ginger, yes, last word. Thank you for moderating, Yuri, from both Seema and pleasure. I'm sure. It's my pleasure. Thank you everybody again, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks all. Thank Goodbye, you. everybody. Thank you.